Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the International Space Station, the outpost of humanity in space. Uh, we're using cutting-edge technologies all around me in our zero-gravity laboratories, uh, so it kind of feels like living in a science fiction movie sometimes. Uh, this year, Poland celebrates the centenary of the birth of Stanislaw Lem, an author and futurologist, and quite simply, one of the most widely read science fiction writers in the world. Uh, he gave us masterpieces such as Solaris and The Invincible. Stanislaw Lem was truly a visionary through both his fictions and philosoph philosophical essays. He touched upon so many diverse topics such as artificial intelligence, the development of the internet, the widespread use of robots, and even contact with ex extraterrestrial civilizations. Uh, he described well in advance a future in which computers are widely used and he had the imagination to describe interstellar travel. And while most of his novels were about missions to the stars and exploring planets, what was really at core was the journey of humans thrown into the unknown, struggling with human nature and its limitations. This resonates with me deeply as we're preparing to go back to the moon and as I'm convinced that we will witness humankind's first steps on Mars during my lifetime. Today, from the International Space Station, our first major outpost on the shores of the cosmic ocean, uh, we greet readers of Stanislaw Lem's books around the world and all lovers of science fiction. This station, orbiting 400 kilometers above your heads, is a mere step on the exciting path ahead of us, the great adventure on the interstellar trails. This journey will be made thanks to people who pursued careers in science and technology because they read and watched science fiction. This journey will be done thanks to imagination, dreams, and ideas that race from them. So let's keep dreaming and pasdravienia. I stopped by the pool and sat down on the concrete edge. I lowered my head and saw the stars reflected. I did not want the stars. I had no use for them. Why had I not realized that a man must be ordinary, completely ordinary, that otherwise it is impossible and pointless to live?
distant stars hardly changed at all when we reached our destination. It shone with the same indifference, though the Southern Cross had long since disappeared to us because we had gone deep into its arms. And then that white point of light, that giant star, no longer was what it had seemed at the beginning, a challenge. Its immutability revealed its true meaning, that it was a witness to our transience, to the indifference of the void, the universe, an indifference that no one is ever able to accept. of the world, no one had gazed upon it, that we were the first.
before, like a dream. Now, clear-headed and alert, awaiting the day, an air almost silver in the presence of the slowly revealed mountain slopes, the gullies, the scree, which emerged from the night in silent confirmation of the reality of my return. For the first time, I, alone, but not a stranger to the earth, now subject to her and her laws. For the first time, I could, without protest, without regret, think of those setting out for the golden